Hello YouTube, um, it's January uh, 2010 and um, I was thinking back to events that occurred just, just over a year ago I was, I was thinking about the um, is Israeli bombing of Gaza and, and the war and I started looking through um, all the old news cuttings and I, I think at the time I thought I've got to write about this and that's something I've been meaning to do for a long long time and I just keep putting it off but um, I, had, I had a go at writing a poem about it and I thought about history and I thought about how it's happened before and um, the similarities between um, the subject I took the Warsaw Ghetto and uh, the Palestinian ghetto in Gaza are, it's so similar it's, it's unbelievable it's as, if, it's as if history is repeating itself so um, I had to go writing a poem about it um, I wish I wish that my words were more powerful that I could kind of um, put it into words better but I hope it gives um, some idea of, of what I was thinking about as I made the wrote the poem. Thanks a lot. History teaches them nothing. Flickering monochrome footage, black and white and grey, Warsaw, a dark, dank, dismal day. The only colour, hurriedly sewn yellow stars. The driving rain drenches hastily packed suitcases as a soldier wearing black, who is only obeying orders, tosses a cigarette butt into the gutter and mutters, their resettlement is a necessity, and all the while the cold rain falls incessantly. They are building a brick wall across Lotter Street, the bricklayers work fast as the mortar freezes in February's chill blast. One by one, every window, every door is locked. Access to food and fuel and medicine are blocked. 200 calories per day, starvation diet. Disease and malnutrition cause a riot. Whilst daily intakes cram these ghetto streets, the high command, its plan of genocide, completes. At last the people against their persecutors rise to catch them by surprise. With petrol bomb and small arms fire they fight from street to street. But bullets fired at panzer tanks can really not compete. Soon all resistance will cease and amongst the rubble these fighters will find peace. The news coverage is high definition, picture perfect burnished by sunlight reflected from the ancient stone of East Jerusalem. A cracking noise interrupts the market town. A splintering of wood, a door is battered down. A screaming Palestinian woman is dragged from her house, her family home for generations. Her daughters cry for her release. The boys hurl stones at black clad riot police who curse and sweat, enforcing justice from Israeli courts while settlers who've left homes abroad wait close at hand for their place in this promised land. Like Berlin's before its fall, bulldozers construct a concrete wall, etched with the graffiti of despair, encircling an ancient land where Samson eyeless pulled the temple down, encompassing people in poverty and despair, replete with check checkpoints where each day a new apartheid rules. Under an uncaring sun, they stand in line and wait, as God's chosen people, full of hate, decide their fate, and with each indignity, grind their pride into this antique soil. So with smouldering anger and just cause, they rise up in an unequal struggle. And once again, children's bodies burnt and twisted, rest in peace amongst the rubble. History has taught them nothing.